affecting the older worker i just but to understand the basic principles it is very very essential that we should understand them appropriately so that the interpretation or the limitations of the older vaporizers or the improvement which is required in these vaporizers can be added on to the subsequent one so this is important silence silence please so vaporizer is an instrument designed to facilitate the change of a liquid and a stick into its vapor and the other important aspect is when this change into liquid and acetic into a vapor uh, and the controlled amount of this vapor should be added to the flow of gases and this is what is required uh, when you talk about the uh, vaporizers part when you talk about uh, the delivery of a particular liquid and acetic agent to a patient system so that we know a controlled amount going on and this is the basic you can say a basic overview function of the vaporizer now just to summarize it once again the function of vaporizers is to produce vaporization of a vaporizer mix vapor with fresh gas flow and control the mixture despite the variables so there would be change in the various gas flows and there will be change in the dial settings so a vaporizer should be such that they can control those mixtures and the delivery of the uh, anesthetic agents remains constant uh, during the anesthetic management and that's the basic purpose of any vaporizer to deliver safe and accurate concentrations of inhalation anesthetic agent to the patient and that is the reason that uh, the vaporizers has been modified and they have been advanced into the recent one which ensures the safe and accurate delivery which was not present in the older versions if we divide the uh, vaporizers they come uh, into uh, various types uh, primarily they can be or very broadly they can be divided into plenum drawer or inhaler type of vaporizer so as you go along with i will just take you through, uh, through these type of uh, three vaporizers when we take so a vaporizer as plenum vaporizer in this the fresh gas flow is pushed into the vaporizer and it has a high resistance when we say drawer here the gas is pulled into the vaporizer by the patient's own efforts the respiratory efforts and they usually are goldman resistance and if you use uh, the the older versions like goldman and emos they were drawn with type of vaporizers when we talk about the inhaler vaporizers uh, it's basically a draw vaporizer in which the carrier gas is air and that's what they called as inhaler vaporizers now uh, how do we divide this uh, vaporizers into various classification Uh, these classification are not very well described uh, into the literature as the vaporizers has progressed from one uh, no uh, category to the other category they have been a recent uh, or they have been a uh, no recent updation of uh, these vaporizers so what i have done is uh, this is not my classification but i have tried to put it into the classification based on the journey of vaporizer so this is what i have tried to uh, do it for you for the residents so that they can understand the older and the newer vaporizers and when we say the oldest classification of vaporizers basically uh, the oldest classification because we are using the older vaporizers which has uh, less safety margin and they have many other issues and that's why they were uh, classified on the basis of these five parameters so when you in the exam when anybody ask you a vaporizer you should try to describe those vaporizers based on these five things that what is the method of regulating output concentration what is the method of vaporization what is the method of location or what is the vaporizer located whether it is compensated compensated or not whether it is specific to a particular agent or multiple agent but as the vaporizers progresses there were some changes in the in the classification and then uh, those classification was primarily Uh, based on not on the location because uh, most of these vaporizers were uh, in circuit and then they were based on resistance the plenum and the low resistance and that's why they come up but if you see the recent vaporizers the new classification of vaporizers primarily it is based on three basic principles or three basic categories you can classify them methods of regulating output concentration that is variable bypass in electronic uh, ways like majority of vaporizers now are based on the electronic version and this decides that how much is the gas coming out of it method of vaporization flow over or injection so this is what where the anesthetic agent the liquid agent is being delivered into the gas and that is been delivered to the patient 
whether it is in the form of a flower means the patients uh, the, the gases flow over over the liquid anesthetic agents and it picks up the other version of method of vaporization injection in which a known quantity of a liquid agent is thrown into the gas mixture and then it converts into vaporizer and is being delivered to the patient and third is the temperature compensation whether we talk about the mechanical supplied heat or computerized so these are the uh, the three basic mechanisms which decides that how the output of a vaporizer will be taken care of because as we know as the uh, liquid is changed into vapor it will take up the heat and it becomes cooler if it becomes cooler the chances of changing from liquid to uh, vap uh, vapors will come down and the delivery will go down that's why we have to maintain a temperature because we want an accurate and sustained delivery which we have targeted on our vaporizers. And that's why uh, these compensatory mechanisms has to be there, uh, which can be mechanical, supply heat, or computerized. So these are the three classification, but just for the postgraduates, uh, there is nothing called the uh, three classification. This is what I have done a couple of years back uh, when I was uh, you know, looking for the classification, and I have put it on the base of the evolution of classification of vaporizers. Now let's come to the older vaporizers. I, I am sure that the next session after me will be taking you to the newer vaporizers, but let's see what old vaporizers we were using and what specific uh, or uh, the requirement or how do we use them. Uh, I'm sure the, uh, Dr. Gedu must have used all those uh, older versions of uh, vaporizers and he will be the best person to add on to his practical experience. But what I have seen from the museums and heard from my teachers, these are the various methods that are available. The earlier methods used to be the open drop method in which uh, the inhalation anesthesia by evaporation of a liquid anesthetic agent was uh, by using a, a specific bottle was dropped on a gauze mask covering the mouth and nose. And these devices where this was being done was on the Schimmelbus mask, uh, which was subsequently had more modifications like Yonkor or Bellamy Gardner bottle, which we used to put the drops on these. And then these drops were counted and accordingly, depending on the depth of anesthesia, these were being used. Subsequently, there were semi-open methods in which a frame was added uh, to keep the ether in an enclosed area, permitted some degree of uh, rebreathing. And there were uh, uh, these semi-open type of uh, vaporizers, so-called vaporizers were Augustan inhaler, Junkers, chloroform operators, or flax scan. Now, these were the initial vaporizers that were being used earlier. So, first one, if you can see this picture, first left upper corner is the Schimmelbus mask. Uh, then comes the Yonkers mask, and then comes the uh, Bellany Garden wire mask, the dropper. And if you see in between, uh, uh, this, this was a dropper in which this was attached to a bottle, and the number of drops that needs to be dropped onto this mask, which was covered with a gauze piece, uh, will decide that. How much should be the depth of anesthesia? I'll, I'll uh, take you through those uh, uh, bottles also. So these are the various masks which were subsequently uh, you now modified into various masks. But if you see here, uh, the most common was uh, about the Schimmelbus and Yonkers, which was the most commonest uh, mask used in the earlier days. But uh, they were modified uh, as per the requirement of the patient's delivery of safe uh, anesthetic agents, uh, the early anesthetic agents that were be being used for it. Now, the semi-open method has a uh, covered area where they would have a, a closed uh, uh, wired mask wherein the gauze piece was attached, like in this uh, Augustan mask with Schumann was framed, wherein they were covered with uh, some amount of gauze, a particular number of layers of the gauzes, and then uh, the, the uh, anesthetic agent which was to be delivered was using in a drop-wise controlled manner using equipments like flag scan. And this flex can will deliver the number of drops of a particular anesthetic agent into the patient, onto the mask, and that will be delivered to the patients with the breathing of first. But subsequently, uh, if you see the, uh, the earlier mask was uh, uh, too basic, the control was uh, very manual and delivery was uh, very uncontrolled. So it was not uh, no, uh, fair enough to have a very safe and controlled uh, delivery of these anesthetic agents. And that's why there was an evolution of vaporizers and the first uh, um, uh, no, you know, structured way which came up is the Morton ether Sinella, uh, which uh, you all are aware of uh, was demonstrated also. Now, how to use this mask for the uh, delivery of anesthetic agents? So it will be 
important from uh, understanding point of view. When we see the open ether method and you see this assembled bus mass, this is water with a dropper. And if you want to use uh, this, this uh, if you see this is covered with some amount of gauze, and it used to be when you are using ether, it has to be 16 layers. If you are using chloroform, it has to be 12 layers of this gauze mask. And then you drop them and you drop the uh, uh, the uh, whatever ether uh, as per the drops. And during inspiration, the air will pass through this uh, gauze, which is on the mask, and this will convert into the uh, vaporized form. And then it will be delivered to the patients. And this is the uh, bottle that uh, gives an, the delivery of the calculated number of drops. And this is one of the bottle called Bellamy Garden Dropper Bottle amber colored control and pouring capacity of 90 ml of ether. Now, based on the uh, depth of anesthesia that you require, you need to give the number of drops appropriately. So to start with in the ether, uh, it is to be the so first minute, we start with 12 drops, it will give 1%. In second minute, 25 drops, 30%. And this is how you increase the number of drops so that you can attain the desired uh, uh, depth of anesthesia. For ethyl chloride, uh, first minute 30 drops, and then you increase to 60 and 90 drops for these patients, so that uh, uh, you can have the depth of anesthesia, which is primarily based on the number of drops using your dedicated bottle that you deliver to the mask. During the maintenance, because as I mentioned earlier, uh, when the liquid agent is changed into the vaporization, it will take up some heat, and the surrounding structure, that is the gauze piece, will get cooled up. It will get a heat loss and uh, there will be change in the room temperature at the level of the mass and that's why uh, with time it will be the delivery of the uh, anesthetic agents will be much less and that's why uh, sometimes you need to have some heated up or some gas pieces needs to be changed up so that uh, they can they can have uh, delivery of the gases uh, which uh, continues uh, to the patients also we need to understand that uh, whenever the composition of the gases uh, of the agents, like when we want to use a 10% ether, there will be a proportionate decrease in the percentage of oxygen also around the mass. And we should be careful because the patient is breathing room air. And that's why there will be a proportionate decrease in the oxygen concentration and that you need to remember. The advantage is a very special a simple equipment. You don't require any electricity or any specialized operators for this type of patients. And hence, it was easy. Low dead space, low distance, wide margin of sound is relatively cheap and can be done at any places. But yes, it has many disadvantages. That's why we require to have better agents, significant rebreathing, hypoxic mixture, as I just mentioned, poor control, inability to assist or control ventilation if patient becomes too deep, no conservation of heat or humidity, difficult airway management pollution of the operating room and hazardous, especially with flame. And then what comes up with the in-system vaporizers. In-system means the vaporizer is into the breathing system. So there are two ways that gas goes to the vaporizer, that will be the push-through or the drawer. And hence, based on this, uh, uh, the, the type of vaporizers were taken up. Drawer means uh, it uh, in, in drawer system, it provides an anesthesia without the supply of compressed gases. And the main carrier gas in these patients is the atmospheric air, which is taken up by the patient's own respiratory efforts. And then the agent is added to it, which is inhaled by the patient by a non rebreathing valve. So this is what a drawer system is, and this is how it looks like of a drawer vaporizer, wherein patients try to breathe in, and the inspiratory air, which is going down, they will pick up some of the anesthetic gases, and that will be delivered to the patient for required amount of the anesthetic gas. The components of a drawer circuit, uh, this is one of the very basic and very useful uh, equipment that was used for a very long time, uh, which requires an Oxford inflating ballows for ventilating the patients, a uh, vaporizer, uh, which can be combined with the other also, and then the breathing circuit, which goes to the patient and the patient can be ventilated using this mask and the ballows. And this may also be connected to the oxygen. So this is one of the uh, one of the uh, very, uh, I think, uh, combination which has been used over very long period and uh, the use of EMOs uh, is still happening in some parts of the world uh, because this is one of the very sturdy and good type of vaporizer. So this EMO vaporizer, uh, you need to see it once. So I request that um, you just go to your museums or any big uh, court back, uh, hospital, you must be able to see this EMO vaporizers. It has certain parts into it. So there is an uh, area where the uh, outlet will be there. There will be a part of inlet which can be connected to which patient inhales the air. There will be a dial where you can see the percentage of uh, the volatile agent that is being set. 
you need to fill from this aspect uh, the volatile agent and you can see the level here and there will be certain um, uh, safety features also the indicators will be there uh, in this uh, which will indicate the level of the ether which are there you need to remember the full form it's a pestin macintosh oxford vaporizer and uh, this is usually used in combination with an uh, bellows uh, which i just mentioned and the assembly i showed so i mentioned initially i showed you the classification uh, which i have tried to made it for you and this classification if you try to use it for emo it is concentration calibrated flow over with wick in system temperature compensation agent specific so in exam this will be a very important aspect that if you are asked with any vaporizer you need to define based on the classification that i just showed you and based on this you need to at least specify that what is the functionality of this uh, vaporizer and this is how you need to speak it and this is how this vaporizer actually works so this will itself indicates the various functional aspects of the vaporizers now when we say this uh, this type of vaporizers uh, uh, if you see the demography of these uh, of demography of these uh, type of vaporizers they they are around uh, uh, 6 kg to 12 kg they are little heavy they can have 40 ml of ethers they have inlet for air and they are uh, they can take up ether chloroform trilin and halothane they can be used for multiple agents now uh, if you see the uh, markings here uh, the level indicator uh, it will start moving once the 150 ml of ether has been put it up and it can take up 300 ml of the anesthetic agents into it is and these are marked with inlet and outlet and you can see the control lever um, you can you need to change these control levers as per depending upon what whatever the agents you are using it now you need to understand that uh, it has one of the safety feature which is a temperature indicator if you see this picture this temperature indicator is there which has a black and red bands uh, in this so as i mentioned earlier that uh, because any volatile agent is dependent upon the heat consumption for changing from liquid to vapor format so if the temperature is more than 32 degrees celsius a red uh, red band you can see here is visible uh, you can see it from outside and this means the temperature is above the working range probably the delivery of the gases volatile agent will be much more and you should be cautious uh, when you are using them uh it usually has an uh, reservoir outside this uh, equipment uh, which contains uh, almost uh, uh, 1.25 liters of water and this is like a heat reservoir it is like a heat sink basically and this tries to you know uh, maintain the temperature of of these patients thermo compensation happens in this because i mentioned earlier the change in temperature the output can change so it has certain thermo compensatory mechanism at the outlet of the vaporizing chamber metal bellows liquid ether so this is connected to a plunger which i just showed you this is the plunger and this is connected to this um, equipment which provides a little amount of thermo compensation at a range of 15 to 29 degrees celsius and obviously the water jacket serves as a heat reservoir and uh, you need to understand the uh, working of this chamber Uh, as just show you the classification for it so whenever the fresh gas the air goes inside this it will be distributed through the bypass channel or the direct uh, mixing chamber so when it goes bypass some amount will go directly some will go into the vaporizing chamber and you can see there is a thermo compensate area which was just talking about so this is a cut section of the emo and here it it will pick up uh, the amount of gases as required as you have done on the dial settings so based on this uh, now uh, this uh, gas carrier gas will pick up the volatile agent and then this will make up mix up with the bypass air and this goes to the outlet so this is how the flow of the gas with the vaporizing agents vaporizer uh, with the anesthetic agents will go and you can control uh, these things now there are certain things uh, which we always talk about the uh, vaporizer is the evaluation how do we know that this uh, the vaporizer is uh, delivering whatever have you mentioned on the um, the uh, dial setting for these patients so when we say the calibration of emo is accurate for intermittent gas flow so if you have extremes of gas flow, say for example say either 1 liter or say 20 liters uh, the output may not be as safe as you have set on the dial it will be highest concentration deliver 60% and that's why uh, these percentages may change splashing duration uh, sp it, it can splash during transit if there is an option to if you keep it in the on position it can splash if you start then using the vaporizer 
it will deliver a very high concentration and you should be very cautious not to put this vaporizer once it is on and you have shifted from one place to other and that's why you should be a little cautious now these are the bellows uh, which were used with it there are six bellows you can see uh, each can take up 150 ml uh, of uh, the uh, air so it can deliver about 900 ml when you're ventilating you do not need to deliver 900 ml but uh, there is a special technique of using it it has two unidirectional walls you can see and you can see this magnet here which is sometimes used uh, uh, for uh, for the patient with the uh, uh, spontaneous versus manual ventilation so this is how the assembly is being used for ventilating you can see this is the vaporizer this is the bellows and this is being connected to a circuit of the patient surgery is ongoing and is ventilating the patient so this is how the surgery was done using this type of vaporizers now uh, when the spontaneous ventilation is required uh, uh, as i just mentioned there should not be no magnet uh, the wall should be active if you want to uh, put the patient on a assisted ventilation or controlled ventilation a magnet needs to be put over here in a pediatric space, uh, in, in a pediatric population, uh, uh, you need to add on some oxygen because it has a lot of dead space, so it may not be good for uh, uh, the pediatric patient, and you should avoid using magnet as mentioned for the balance. Now, there's an additional thing that was being added by the Indian uh, uh, researcher, which is uh, Brigadier Rama Rao, uh, which has attached to the inlet of EMO, uh, which can give more oxygen. I mentioned earlier that the inlet just have the air. But when you want to give a patient more oxygen, this type of adapter, which was added to the inlet, provided more amount of oxygen to the patient, and hence the safety was probably increased. Now, I think uh, I will just wait for uh, just uh, 10 seconds. Uh, you just think of this vaporizer and just put on your chat that which is this vaporizer. Rakesh, you are disconnected. So I'm back. I'm just giving them uh, just 10 seconds to think of the answer. Sir. So this uh, vaporizer was Oxford Miniature Vaporizer. This Oxford Miniature Vaporizer uh, uh, is, if you, I just come go back to the initial classification that I showed you. So this is a thermally buffered vaporizer. And if you need to classify the specificity of this vaporizer it should be concentration calibrated, flow over with wick, temperature compensation by supplied heat, low resistance, can operate as plenum vaporizer, and you can use halothane, trialene, and methoxyfluorine. Uh, and this you can see on the dial setting for these vaporizers. And this is a very uh, versatile vaporizer and it was used to a large extent. And it has a water jacket around it, and it can have uh, approximately uh, 1060 grams of uh, full water jacket and this is what I was mentioning about the uh, heat sink or uh, you can say uh, thermal composition can happen uh, via this uh, the water jacket which is uh, present here. Uh, the initially one uh, it, it was having a small uh, volume for the you know, volatile agent but the newer versions which were uh, you know, subsequently made for OMV they can accommodate more and that you can use even for uh, um, you know, bigger surgeries. The, if you see, if you remember, there was an arrow which is mentioned here, you can see here. So this is the arrow, this will uh, specify that the gas flows from this side to this side, and this is the patient. And so this will confirm that this is going to the right direction. You can use it for various agents, halothane, isoforine, chloroform, methoxyfluorine. And the, they are, if you see this dial, this dial is for different agents. So whatever agents you are using it, you need to change the dial, put the other dial for all these agents. Uh, because there were different uh, calibrations and you can use uh, this for uh, various cases. The thermal compensation uh, was uh, using a reservoir of glycol uh, within this uh, structure, uh, which acts like an uh, heat sink for this, which is glycol with water, 25% glycol with water. And this can uh, this was designed basically for a flow rate of 3 to 8 liters uh, or a draw rate of 4 to 10. And if you go beyond these flows, the output may not be as safe as your dial setting. So this was calibrated at these flow rates for its more accuracy. It has a special filler for filling the anesthetic gases into it. Uh, it has a safety mechanism, a light pressure air relief. So when you put it, it will have air relief. And then it opens up the filler and then you can go ahead and put up uh, your, your anesthetic agents into it. Now, it can be uh, combined with EMO. I showed you a figure earlier. 
and this performance is uh, can be even used not only for spontaneous but also for uh, intermittent pressure, uh, positive pressure ventilation and hence it was used in combination. So do not use this in a circle system because they can produce very high concentration and uh, it only holds in small volumes so that it needs to be filled up. But subsequently, as mentioned, uh, a bigger vaporizer, OME vaporizer was also coming, which can be used for major surgical procedures. Then subsequently, the another uh, old vaporizers, uh, which was not into a practice too long as compared to the OMVs uh, and EMO I mentioned, uh, Bryce Smith induction unit. So this uh, facilitates induction of the ether anesthesia along with the halothane, and this is how they were being used. So this is a combination unit. And this was connected to the outlet of EMO, which I showed earlier. Um, they, they can be used in combination with it, and it delivers halothane uh, 2 to 4 percent for 3 to 5 minutes. So, any guess for this vaporizer? Another 10 seconds for you. So, this one is a Goldman vaporizer. Again, uh, just remember classification. I think uh, you will be getting these slides. Uh, you can just remember this classification. This is concentration calibrated. Lower without weak, no temperature compensation, multiple agent halothane trialing in and out of systems. And this uh, Goldman vaporizer, you can see the, the previous one were having a metallic sheet, but here is a, is a glass bowl which is there, and there's a capacity of 20 cc, and this can be attached uh, to the uh, circuit with bypass and vaporizing chamber, and the gases goes into this and they pick up some volatile agent and goes out. And on the on the top, you can see there's a dial setting uh, which you can uh, turn it as per your requirement. Subsequently, if you want to increase the concentration because uh, it can maximum deliver 2.21 percentage of the anesthetic agents, so there was an addition of wick into it, and it was called as young modification. And if you want for the higher concentration, you can use it in series uh, to such the Goldman vaporizers, and it's called false modification. And these uh, Goldman vaporizers were subsequently uh, no, made into three different type of uh, specifications as Mark I, Mark II, and Mark III which has uh, advantages over it uh, based on the a little bit of uh, different mechanisms. The self-locks uh, in the off position was the feature of Mark I, and it can deliver up to 3% for these patients. Now, depending upon the flow of the gases that you're delivering to these patients, the flow, the output will change based on whatever agents you're using. So this type of uh, charge system was very useful for uh, these type of vaporizers. The raw welcome vaporizer is a modification of Goldman vaporizers and uh, in which they have tried to make the uh, glass bottle a little bigger one and with a wick. And subsequently, we got an ether bottle which was used on the boils machine for very long. And this uh, boils bottle you need to classify as concentration calibrated, flow or bubble through, no temperature compensation. Multiple agent can be used and out of system. And you must have seen these type of bottles in an older version of uh, Boyle's machine. I have seen it a couple of times. And this is what was being used. If you see this, uh, uh, this type of plunger which was there, this was being used for uh, changing the concentration because this goes in and out. And the gas flow which was going into it, if you push the plunger in, majority of air will go through the volatile agent, thus increasing the concentration of the volatile agent. They have, uh, th these boil bottles were separate for ether and trilene and uh, the volume was a little different for these type of bottles, similarly for the halothane bottles also. Now, when we're using boil bottle, the issue was that the output would be affected by temperature of liquid, the plunger level, the control level position, level of liquid, eccentricity of food and agitation of vaporizer. In fact, agitation was used sometimes uh, at the induction to increase the concentration delivery of these patients, but they were not very meaningful calibrated and hence becomes an issue. They have certain uh, specific unique features. Uh, they have grease. Sometimes this can be a source of fire at in these patients also. And that's why you were very, very um, uh, needs to be, you know, keep them very clean. Uh, they require some amount of uh, replace packing the gland nut, which first needs to be kept clearly for these patients. So I'll just uh, leave you at this uh, newer operators because uh, they were not in clinical use, but yes, like uh, the copper kettle bottle was being used. You need to remember this classification, measured flow, bubble through, out of system, temperature compensated, multiple agent. And these type of vaporizers, again, uh, it's like a measured gas because the gas delivery which was being to these patients were being divided between the bypass channel and the uh, vaporizing chamber. And then the, uh, the desired amount of uh, gases needs to be 
uh, no, calculated, and then the output was as per the calculation that you have done for these patients. Uh, they were acceptable over wide range of flows, but uh, the temperature compensation was not good. Enhanced slavery decreases with types. And now what we come to, I think this will be the next uh, uh, half an hour or so, you'll be going through the procedure to now vaporizers where, because as mentioned in the beginning, that the vaporizers were not very controlled. So we need uh, vaporizers which can deliver precise concentration of the anesthetic agents. And that's why the newer vaporizers which came to the market like tech series, which was a common one, uh, Dragger Weapon 9 and series, they are the precision vaporizers. And I'm sure that these newer vaporizers will be taken subsequent to my session by the subsequent speaker, where they have certain safety mechanisms which were uh, not thought of and uh, incorporated for these limitations where not only the precise amount of uh, delivery of gases was there, but also the concerns like the uh, tilting of these vaporizers or the backflow effect on these vaporizers, which affect the concentration or the temperature compensation part was taken care in new vaporizers and the recent one that have been used. Uh, uh, you are aware of the desperate vaporizers and the cassette, aladdin cassette vaporizers, which have uh, controlled by electronic gadgetry and uh, and the latest including the injection type of vaporizers so they are very well controlled electronically and computer uh, softwares and gives a very precise delivery with a good amount of safety margins so thank you so much and uh, over to you sir <laughs> okay i think i'm not sure whether there is any question for anybody going but i think it was very well covered by you but there are a few things I just want to add. Can I add it, Rakesh? Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. See, there are a few things that, you, for example, uh, as far as the mask is concerned, you said Shimal Bush had all those things. Mm -hmm. But I must specify one more thing, that why the Shimal Bush was originally designed only for the chloroform. Because if you see the Shimal Bush, it was being made as a wire frame into four pieces. So that when you pour on one or two side only, remaining was the air. So the less chance of hypoxia. Well, when the other mask came yonkers, there was a wire mesh above. So even if you drop one drop, it spreads uniformly. Was well, ether needed to be spread very nicely. And ether never caused hypoxia. That's the reason that was designed. And one more thing that was not been told, that was called Hawks mask, which was basically designed for the pediatric, which had it was a round shaped and there was a oxygen nipple behind so that the children do, don't get hypoxic. So that was the one which was designed. Uh, as far as the other things are concerned, I think everything was covered well. Well, if you see the EMO, EMO originally was designed in such a way that it was six plus kg, six and a half kg. They say if you go the historical way, it has been said that this was basically designed for the war victims so that whenever it is being used so what happens for example if there is a war and i'm there as an anesthetist i go there to if somebody is injured his leg is injured or something like that or a patient is very bad and i have to do some whatever deployment suturing over there only or uh, whatever it is <coughs> in that condition what i'll do is they used to tell the people that we, yeah yeah, we can, like, we can continue. I think somebody said hello. Yeah, I think that was accidentally done, sir. You can, con you can continue, sir, please. And so that time what they do, they used to basically airdrop it with the parachute. That's the reason it was made very heavy so that whenever I drop it, it will drop exactly at the war site. So it was made like that. Six and a half kg. This is important information, sir. Yeah. Another thing in Oxford, in uh, miniature vaporizer, there is also something to be added. In the good old days, the temperature compensation that was used in such a way that there was no water jacket around. Basically, there was a calcium chloride crystals which was kept on the sides of the vaporizer. If this is the vaporizer, these are the calcium chloride crystals that were kept side. So that whenever the patient is inhaling and expiring the air, that is the time the moisture from your expired air or from the temperature surrounding up the vaporizer drops down. So that water goes slowly into the calcium chloride crystal. And this calcium chloride crystal basically gets converted to CaCO3. And that 
chemical reaction induces the heat and that heat was supplied to the vaporizer earlier that is omb vaporizer and as far as what you said correctly that is omb and emo they were used together and that was the one which was called as a emo system so not i mean emo vaporizer is separate and emo system includes breathing circuit as well as omb and emo so these are then one more uh, thing that was you know, we used to have i have used maximum there was something like uh, km bottle or side bottle this was very popularly used i must have given more than 5 5 6000 anesthesia with that it was again a vaporizer which was a plastic one which was a squarish bottle plastic shape uh, i'm not sure whether you can be able to see that it was the very best vaporizer that we have ever used you can see this i'm not sure whether you'll be able to appreciate this vaporizer this one this was in plastic shape and there were a cap steel cap on which there were multiple holes so that the air can go through that and this was used it was just attached at the head end of the patient with a hook and we used to give anesthesia to the level that so much is so i mean sometimes really i think what we used to do was something uh, too much daring like we used to take the patient to the almost third fourth stage you feel fully dilated something like that and respiration is also not good and that's the time i used to go out and have a cup of tea and then come back patient comes back into the third stage so it was the best anesthetic i ever saw in fact so many camps wherever we have gone we used to use the km bottle km bottle was even less than your uh, plastic bottle weight it was such a small bottle km bottle because of km it was called but otherwise we used to call it as a side bottle this was one of the best one that was used in those days anything more you want me to add hey, thank you so much i think uh, this is uh, coming from the uh, your personal experiences and this is the treasure that we are getting from you sir. thank you so much sir hey, shimal bush mask and all those things i must have given more than 5 6000 anesthesia with the shimal bush mask but these are the things which we used to learn very nicely i, I know i think uh, I, i would request uh, you and i will request the organizers also that uh, if you can Uh, show the uh, youngsters like us uh, the use of this mask on a simulated patient sometime uh, because uh, we have never seen those putting of this mask we have seen always in museum so i would request uh, you have used so many so if you can just come or sometime and have a video recording of uh, exactly how using them on a simulated uh, uh, yes. scenarios i, think that I don't be. mind i don't mind even in the summer season when you drop a ether so the number of gauze pieces that are being kept was deciding according to the season so if it is a summer we used to keep it 8 to 10 gauze pieces so that more of the liquid can be sustained there where if it is the winter it was only 4 to 6 gauze pieces because the vaporization doesn't take place that rapidly when it is winter so that was also been done over there i think we'll have your experience and uh, shweta is smiling uh, thinking of something new new generation i don't know whether she is smiling i don't know what's why she is smiling so i am not sure is it your no, no, so uh, we have we have just listened to the stories we have never actually seen all this so i mean from our senior zamla madam and all also used to tell us these stories we have actually okay. listened to your lecture sir in tata and and grown up on that so uh, it's it's a privilege to be actually speaking in the two in the i can tell you one thing whenever i come to delhi i will i don't mind i'll come and give a lecture on this older vaporizers also because i've used it all wow. i don't mind as far as goldman is concerned i must say one thing goldman was very well used but in mumbai there was one incident that had happened way back in 1970s where a third mbbs student in jj hospital was getting operated and uh, that goldman vaporizer was kept on the boils machine at that uh, common outlet gas outlet and when it was being given suddenly there was something mishap happened and that goldman fell down and when it fell down entire halothen entered into the patient's lungs straight so much so that patient suddenly had a cardiac arrest 
and where after they tried to revive, he was revived, but I think after 48 hours or so, that fellow passed away. This is also Goldman Sachs example, I still remember that. This was there in 1970-72. I think Rakesh, you can continue with the next one now. Sir, I think next one is uh, with Madam. She will be talking about the model of Rakesh. Unmute, sir, please. I said she is definitely younger, so she will talk of the latest vaporizers. I am the older person, so I can talk on the older vaporizers. And you are in between, so you could talk in between those things. Uh, 